Warning, the material discussed in this show may be sensitive or a trigger for some listeners. Strong language and topics are discussed. We talk with active duty service members and practice OPSEC at all times. You have been warned. Rainbow Soul, a queer perspective on spirituality. Join Hollis Taylor, a non-binary author, witch, psychic, and alchemical mage with fellow drag king, LaCrosse Ortiz, a Jewish Taino that identifies as an atheist. These guys explore deep spiritual topics with weekly special guests and offer dream interpretation and tarot readings and more. Explore spirituality beyond mainstream religion with these uniquely queer perspectives. Dive deep into the rainbow soul. A live discussion on Sundays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Sundays. Just hashtag Rainbow Soul Vodcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and more. Hashtag Rainbow Soul Vodcast. Featured on the LGBTQ Friends Channel, the WLFE DB Network. The Bipolar DM, Jason Cottom. His show talks about dungeons and dragons, indie writing, and living with a mental illness, in particular bipolar disorder, borderline disorder, and major depression, among other diagnoses. Check us out right here on Saturdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, also on WLFE-DV.com, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. So take a seat, sit back, and get ready for the Bipolar DM. Welcome to the Bipolar DM Show. I am your host, Jason. This is a show about indie writing, Dungeons and & Dragons, and living with a mental illness, in particular bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, and major depression, among other diagnoses. If you want to get a hold of us, uh, you can reach us by email at thebipolardm at gmail.com, or you can message us through Facebook. Uh, you can go to my webpage, www.thebipolardm.com. There you'll find previous episodes of my podcast, links to the live show, as well as resources on indie writing, Dungeons and Dragons, and mental illness. Uh, for those of you on Facebook, our Facebook handle is at Bipolar DM. This is a more up to date pro- platform than the web page just because it's easier for me to b- do postings like from my phone or tablet and be able to post uh, articles, videos. And, uh, and other, uh, other things uh, in relations to the topics we discuss. For those of you who are fans of the show, we do have a Facebook group page. The uh, group page is called The Bipolar DM Nation, and this is more of a behind-the-scenes look at how the show is produced, as well as my live updates that kind of give you an inside look on what it's like to live with a, uh, to live with a mental illness. Be sure to find us on WLFE-DB.com as well as on Stream TV. Our channel on Stream TV is Variety Unlimited. Uh, we have uh, that going on there. I um, mean, please also check out our other shows that we have going on, uh, such as Across the Pond, Card Pools and Coffee with Lindsay, Everything Yet Nothing, Sophie Guys Movie Review, Through Kaleidoscope Eyes, and of course Rainbow Soul. Uh, We got tons and tons of shows on there uh, of all kinds of varieties, so be sure to check those out. Uh, We also wanted to announce that we are a proud supporter of the safe space. So uh, no matter what your background is, whether you're uh, LGBTQ+, uh, veteran, uh, high school, college, uh, adult, if you need a safe place for you to be able to go to virtually to be able to talk, Uh, We're here to listen. We're not psychiatrists. We're not psychologists. We're not going to try and solve your problems, but we're here to listen. We're not here to judge. So, you know, be sure to check out the safe space on WLFE-DB.com. Click on the safe space icon and you can get linked to all the uh, all the resources that we have available. Uh, We got a ton of them. So be sure to check that out if you are in need of a safe space. Also want to announce, uh, let you know, of course, about the Veteran Podcast Awards. 
Uh, that's going on. The uh, registration is going on now until July 31st. If you are a veteran or active duty service member and you have a podcast, be sure to go to www.veteranpodcastawards.com. And there you'll find more information about the uh, podcast awards. We have about 19 uh, different uh, categories that are available. I'm registered on it as well. So be sure to check me out as well as my fellow veterans and be sure to vote. Um, let's see. In news and noteworthy, um, Bipolar Dragons, our uh, spinoff show where, we, where a bunch of us hosts play Dungeons and Dragons, is on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's uh, going very well. The uh, last week we uh, hit over 61,000 downloads, over 2,000 views. So we did fantastic for our second show. So be sure to check that out and see what's going on there. We have a Patreon account as well to help support the show. So if you're interested in supporting us, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash bipolar DM. There you'll find that we have a couple of different levels, different tiers of support, such as the $5 level, $10, and $20 level. Uh, We have T-shirts. We have buttons. uh, We are getting stickers in this week, so we have all kinds of goodies that are available. If you uh, don't want to be a Patreon supporter but would like to purchase those items, we do have a store on uh, my Facebook page at BipolarDM. There you can purchase our T-shirts, the Bipolar DM T-shirts, such as the one here that I'm wearing, as well as I Hate Bi- I hate Bipolar, It's Awesome T-shirt. Uh, that one's available as well. Those are $20 each. We have buttons as well. So uh, got a whole bag of these suckers right here. So if you're interested in getting a button, we have those. I love And also we have the stickers that will be coming up too, which has the Bipolar DM logo. So be sure to check all those out. In upcoming shows, we're going to have a show with Jason Eastman. Um, He is going to discuss with us how how Dungeons & Dragons has helped him with uh, dealing with mental illness. And then also uh, following that, we have Guy Sklanders. He is the uh, host of How to Be a Great GM on YouTube. Uh, has a lot of videos on there. Be sure to check him out. Uh, this is on YouTube and Facebook on how to be a great GM. Uh, he is in London, so this is going to be a pre-recorded interview, and then we're going to broadcast that on Saturday on our Saturday show. So be sure to check that out. And uh, in today's show, we are with uh, Joshua. I am not going to try and pronounce your last name just yet because I know I will butcher it, but let's go ahead and bring him on board. Hey, how's it going? How do you pronounce your last name? It's good. It's good. Um, So uh, the last name is pronounced Montambo. It's super easy to say. It's just when you look at it, it becomes a little bit difficult because it's got about, oh, probably five or six letters that it really doesn't need. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of vowels in there, but that's great. Um, uh, We had uh, talked earlier, had a great conversation, and so I'm really looking forward to this interview. Uh, Let's just go ahead and get started. How did you get into Dungeons & Dragons? Well, um, so... Uh, years ago, um, like three decades ago, (laughs) quite a while ago, um, moving around, I was a military brat, um, just moving from place to place to place. Uh, not a lot of friends because again, moving around, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have, uh, any kind of, uh, internet or anything like that at that time. So we were, you know, if you had a friend that was far away, they were far away. Um, and that was it. And you just, you know, mail was all there was. So I got to, uh, born Cape Cod, Ed, um, um, Oh, what is the name of the base there? It's been a while, but anyways, I was, I was at a coast guard base because my father had been a recruiter and I met a young man, became really good friends. And he introduced me to the red box Dungeons and Dragons, the very, very, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, this was the edition that came out after Chainmail. Um, uh, for those of you that are D and D historians, you'll know what Chainmail is. Um, and this was that red box where um, you know, uh, Elf was a class, 
halfling was a class, dwarf was a class, and then you could be a wizard, a fighter, a thief, or a cleric. And that was your boom. Classic party makeup. Yeah. Yeah. And that was what was available. And those, uh, there was no like, you couldn't play an elven fighter. That wasn't a thing. Elf was elf. You were an elf, or you were a halfling, or you were a um, dwarf. And um, so, yeah, that's where I started. That's where I very, very first started with those. You know, I had a borrowed pair of dice, um, uh, which became a a gift pair of dice. You know, set of dice, and uh, I still actually roll with a couple of them. Uh, mm-hmm. I've, you know, over the decades, I've lost most of that set. Yeah, but I still have um, the D10 that came with the original set. Um, and you can barely read the writing uh, because the original set came with a grease pencil to color in the numbers oh, on the wow. dice. And um, so it's, you know, the, the numbers on, on this dice are, if it's not in the right light, you can't really see what the numbers are. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a, you know, um, so that was, I, that's where I started when I was, you know, preteen, wasn't even in high school. I was, I want to say maybe, maybe I was 10, maybe a 10 or 11 right in right. there. Um, and that was, you know, it was, it was a nerd hobby. It was a, it was a real, at that time it wasn't as popular as, as it's become, um, and it, uh, it was kind of a refuge for those of us that were not, um, you know, not really, we weren't in anything. We weren't in any yeah. cliques. We weren't in any groups. We didn't really, you know, fit in or anything like that. Yeah. But the, the people that gamed, you know, the four or five of us that gamed, the, we were, that was, you know, we, that was our club. That was our group. That was, you know, we'd spend, you know, other kids would spend days out playing basketball or, or whatever they did. We would spend days out on the back porch, uh, or back deck, uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, I'm pretty similar in how I, in, in my background too, I was a Navy brat, grew up all over the place, two tours in Japan. And it was over there at Stars and Stripes that I got my first uh, set of Dungeons and Dragons. And actually, mine was uh, second edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, so that yeah. was where I cut my teeth on was the second edition. And and I spent every every paycheck I got from my job went to Dungeons and Dragons. And what I, I bought up everything the Stars and Stripes store had. So it was and, and it was very much the same way. Um, you know, we were uh, we we didn't fit anywhere. It was, uh, you know, real tough to um, make friends, especially being a military brat. Now, you know, going to a DOD school, you would think it'd be a little bit easier because we're all military brats. We're all, you know, whether no matter what branch you are, but it was very cliquish where I was at in Japan, you know, and yeah. and so uh, I didn't fit in anywhere, and uh, and so it was uh, it was pretty rough. But Dungeons and Dragons was my refuge. And I actually got started with the Dragonlance books. That's how I got into Dungeons and Dragons. Is uh, I yeah. stole a copy yeah. of Dragonlance, the first one. Yeah, yeah. Somebody left it on the table. I swiped it, read it. I was in love with the book. And then I found out it was based on a game. And I was like, I have got to play this game. And that's how I got started was that right there. Now, um, you played the Red Box Edition. Now, yeah. this was the... But this wasn't the very first one, was it? What the when it had hobbits, and you know the one that got sued when Gary Gygax and them got sued over. Uh, no, I believe that one was actually the chainmail. Okay, so that was chainmail that got sued over. I, I yeah. think. It, I think. I and yeah. look, I'm, I know there's going to be a historian on here that actually like knows the actual one that um, that got sued for that. And but I do believe that it was chainmail. I could be wrong. I am perfectly yeah. happy if somebody would, you know comes and says you're you're totally wrong on that but i feel like i i feel like i'm not um so the funny thing about that is same guy that introduced me to the red box which at the time i do believe that first edition was out 
Mm-hmm. But I think it was like one of those situations where like we have now when a new edition comes out, it takes a little while for everybody that's playing yeah. to catch up or some people don't even, some people never change over to the new edition because they like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I, the same person that introduced me um, uh, to, and I, I'm always thankful to him, um, introduced me to the Dragonlance novels mm-hmm. and introduced me to Dragonlance and uh, the game. Um, and of course the, the very first box set that that came with, yeah. I, I, I bought myself, I saved up my money and I bought that myself. Um, and then I had, and I still, I still have um, the first hardcover that came out for the dragon when, when it, when it flipped over to second edition, mm-hmm. um, still have that. Uh, I still run Dragonlance uh, to this day. Yeah, that's um, a great, great campaign world. Of it's unbelievably rich. It is unbelievably rich. Um, Margaret Wise, Tracy Hickman. Um, you know, I met him at a convention years ago. Oh wow! Um, years and years ago, uh, and they are just—they are the so creative, and so their world building is so um, dead on. Mm-hmm. That you lose yourself in those novels. You absolutely yeah. lose yourself in those novels. And so, again, just like you, uh, found out the, those uh, there was a game, had to play the game, had to get the game. And so that's we switched to that. And once we switched, you know, once our group switched to, to that, there was no going back uh, yeah. for me. I've always run uh, Dragonlance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll, you know, as a player, I'll play in anything, but, you know, DM for life. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, DM. So I can, a, yeah, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've actually played the game myself as a player, but yeah. I can't yeah. count how many times I've been a DM. Oh, it, yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, I've had a few games that I played in um, when I came in, and I, and I actually got a chance to, um, when the... Uh, Age of Mortals campaign for 3.5 mm. came out, I got a chance to uh, play through that when it very, very first came out. Yeah. Um, uh, from beginning to end, from the very first uh, 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 man, mon- module all the way to the to the last uh, module. And so um, that was really fun because um, I managed to keep my character alive. Uh, yeah, which is a hard uh, thing to do. Yeah. Especially in 3.5. 3.5 is very uh, combat, you know, is pretty tough in that game well um i think that ultimately i think that um every version has mm-hmm. its challenges mm-hmm. um it, they have every version have its, has its pluses and has its minuses um yeah i feel like i mean look a lot of people hate on fourth edition yeah a lot of people hate on it i like it because i mean i and I didn't play it much, but I like it because it really lent itself to organized play. Mm-hmm. It really lent itself to kind of the idea of I can take this character and play in any campaign anywhere and I'll be able to play the same character. So, yeah. you know, every version I think has its uh, pluses and minuses. Um, I think that uh, for a lot of us, um, uh, we loved we loved Thacko. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, from the, you know, from back in the day, but honestly, let's be honest here. Was Thacko all really that great? Or do we just look at the past with rose tinted glasses? Thacko was a nightmare for me. I had to have, I had to have a chart in order to figure it out. We made up our own grid chart on grid paper yep. just to make it easier because it just didn't make any sense to me to hit armor class zero. You know, and for those of you who are not familiar with Thacko, to hit armor class zero, back in the day, like with second edition and those later and some of those early editions, uh, the lower your armor class was, the lower that score was, the harder it was for you to be hit. Uh, versus nowadays with fifth edition, they flip that around, and so now the higher your armor class is, the harder you get hit. And that one logically makes a little bit more sense to me than Thacko did, but. Um, but also, you know, when we're talking fifth edition, they went away from the uh, they went not entirely away, but they they turned a little bit away from the the origins, which was, you know, this was a, a strategic uh, game, yeah. a military game 
versus, you know, now more role playing, you know. And so, you know, with fifth edition, I really like how it's now more focused again towards the role playing and character building and then streamlining the um the um the um combat roles and stuff like that so that they're a little bit easier to do for especially beginning players. Yeah, and you know, the thing about uh, uh gaming, uh the thing about D D or any of the gaming things um any of your role-playing games is you need it to be accessible you need to be able to bring in new blood new folks Mm -hmm. um you know and uh it's it's funny because i i have often said about um uh, dungeons and dragons that uh, i can teach it to you in an afternoon Mm mm-hmm but after 30 years of playing it, I am still not a master. Yeah. You know, I am still not, I still make mistakes. I still, and you know, that's human mm-hmm. and it, it's human to make mistakes. Uh, we all do it. Um, and so to me, that kind of adds to the flavor of the game. Yeah. Um, that adds to the kind of improv theater nature of the game. Yep. Um, that being said, uh, I do, you know, I've, I've done some experimenting. I've done a little, uh, taste of the fifth edition and I do like it. Um, I think, uh, right now we're just waiting on seeing if, uh, they actually come out with some Dragonlance stuff for it. Yeah. And there's Um, a lot of talk about that too. I mean, a lot of talk, but I don't know what they're waiting on. I mean, as far as to pull the trigger on that one, I'm not sure what the holdup is before, you know, I don't know if it's in development or even if they're even touching it yet. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I, if, if I could understand what major uh, business companies like uh, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro uh, were thinking, I would be a lot better off than I am now. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I would have a lot more money than I do. Uh, yeah. Well, not really, because I would just spend it on D&D, um, yeah. which is, you know, a, 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 a slightly less expensive habit than drugs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and just as addicting. Oh, no, no, no. Just absolutely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, and, and again, this is not, you know, everybody's got an addition that they like. Yeah, everybody has a and and I think maybe I'm a little biased towards 3.5 because mm-hmm. that's what Dragonlance came out as. That's mm-hmm. what dra- you know the drag was was 3.0. You know when they released the new Dragonlance stuff, they released it for that. They didn't release any for uh, four. They haven't released any for five. Um, you know, Pathfinder I think is a is a perfectly acceptable um, and we and we use Pathfinder um, because uh, the you know the the skills are a little more streamlined than in three point five. Uh, there's there's just there's a few other things that go around with it that I like. Um, now, one of the things I really like about Fifth is that the again the skills are even more streamlined, are even more. Um, uh, uh, easy to understand and whatnot. Yeah. So, and that, and that's you know you want to get to the role playing. You mm-hmm. know you want to encourage and and obviously we all know the meta gamer. We all know the fellow that's coming in here and is like, I've got, you know, I've I've built basically an unbeatable character and we're yeah, the min max, yeah, yeah, the min max, everything like that. And by the way, as a DM, you have no unbeatable characters because ultimately, I can just drop a flaming hay cart on you. Yes, <laughs> or um, a dragon, or you know, dragon uh, comes out of nowhere, snuffs you out just just because, and flies off into the sunset. You know, I don't, I, I don't, I've never had to do it, and I don't yeah. like doing it. Yeah. I would never like to do it. Um, yeah, I haven't I done it either, but I've a, had the min max as a DM, uh, as a game master, um, uh, and and by the way, I think that I put forward to the um, council that we change our name to Story Master. Mm. Um, I think that um, uh, our job, and this is again, this is just me. This is my opinion on this. Is as a as a Story Master, our job is to provide a story that our players are going to play out in. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, it's not like, to me, it's not my job to kill them. No. It's my job to entertain them. Yeah. It's my job to provide so that they can have fun. 
Yes. And I like I like how a guy um my gosh, I'm gonna butcher his last name too. Skligman, he has a, a how to be a great GM on YouTube. I'm gonna have him on soon. Um, he, I like how he describes it as you're as the dungeon master or game master. Your job is the plot. The story is up to the characters or the players, and so you provide that overarching plot of you know here's the villain the villain's going to be doing this and then the story though is being told by the players themselves and so I like how he describes that too That's good that is good I I like that as well I like that uh, quite a bit as well um as far as uh, uh you know you're and I'm a theater guy uh so yeah. I kind of look at it in in terms of theater a lot of times and so as a theater guy myself, um, I, I look at myself as kind of the director and the stage uh, mm-hmm. staging and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, my players are my actors. Yeah. And, but but the whole show is ad-libbed. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the whole show, everything, the scenario, you know, I'm throwing out scenarios and they're ad-libbing their way through it. And um, I, there is nothing I love more than when you get that brand new player in who is shy who um, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, is maybe, uh, uh, you know, is maybe has never gotten an opportunity to open up and, and kind of come out of their shell. And all of a sudden they're out there, you know, they're, they're playing Throg, the um, half ogre barbarian, and they're out there screaming, like legitimately, literally screaming mm-hmm. as they charge into combat, screaming blood for the blood god. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, um, there's, I, I love that. I love yeah. when D and D can be used to bring somebody out socially and give them that social kind of connection that they weren't otherwise getting. Yeah. And so unless uh, and that actually kind of goes right into my next question, which, you know, you live through the satanic panic of the eighties. I did too. <laughs> yeah. And, but what yeah. was it, what is it about Dungeons and Dragons that makes it endure 40 years of play? I mean, it's, you know, been around for almost 40 years and yeah. it's still going strong. Actually it's going stronger now. Yeah. Uh, Wizards of the Coast said worldwide, they estimated at least 40 million people have played the game at some point in their life. Yeah. Um, I think, Ultimately, it is the it is a combination of things because it really, when you think about it, shouldn't work. Not yeah. it should not still be working in an age where we have video games. It should not still be working, and yet it does, and it endures, and it gets bigger, and it brings in new folks, and new folks discover it, and new folks fall in love with it. And I, it is a I think it's a perfect storm. Um, it's uh, complicated enough that people feel a sense of accomplishment when they figure it out, but not so complicated that um, it, it makes people afraid to try. Yeah. Um, Uh, Especially with this newest edition. I definitely, Um, I think that the uh, community um, with, with very, very, very few exceptions is one of the most open and inviting communities. You know, there's this, myth of the uh gamer in it, and the gamers in their uh parents basement yeah. um which which is kind of i mean look yeah thank I, you fbi i never <laughs> i absolutely never played in a basement yeah. i've always played upstairs um except for now as an adult i'm i'm playing in a in a you know basement um, <laughs> yeah, but you have a game room, room, don't you? So you, it's not really the basement. No, it's, no, it's no. Kind of it's like a, a game. Yeah, it's a walkout in a uh, split level, is what it is. Yeah. Um. So you know that's that's kind of a joke there on. Yeah. That. But um, it endures because of the social aspect. Mm-hmm. It endures because of the um. The, the friends you make and yeah. the community you're part of. And, you know, it's, it's <clears throat> honestly, it's like being a vet. I, and, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that in the sense of in any way other than the camaraderie. Of, you know, if I meet you out somewhere, I know that you and I share being a vet. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm out there, I know that we share something that 
the people around us don't. Mm-hmm. And that, and that's with D&D. You know, you, I um, auditioned for and got into a show and, the other day. Um, and in doing so, there was another vet there. And he was talking to his daughter about D&D and about mm-hmm. gaming and about the game that he runs for his daughter and her friend yeah. and their friends and whatnot. And that ended up being, you know, after I had done my audition, I stayed up there talking with this guy for like an hour. Yeah. And, and we were just talking about D and D and talking about what we love about it and talking about, um, you know, and, and it doesn't matter what they call it and it doesn't matter where I'm always going to call it D and D let's just get that, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm always going to call it D and D. Um, but we, we sat there and we had this conversation and, you know, uh, we didn't have a lot of other things in common. We didn't have a lot of other things, you know, other than the fact he was a vet, I was a vet. We both love D and D. Um, uh, and which is way more um, prevalent nowadays than um, it used to be. Yeah. Um, because yes. I, and, and I think it's another one of those things that, um, and just going off on a side, cause you know, um, uh, uh, TBI brain injury, that's how your brain works sometimes. Mm. Um, but uh, I think that nowadays it's just more acceptable. I think well, back also, in the yeah. day, it, there was a viewpoint of, um, D and D was only played by losers and people who couldn't get a girl and, you know, yeah. all of this kind of stuff. But now we've got Hollywood stars coming out and loving it. Mm-hmm. We've, yeah. You know, so I think it endures because much like theater indoors, much like, um, print medium, you know, books indoor, there's something about it that speaks to, the core of what it is to be human. Yeah. And what's so cool is like the, those of us who played back in the day are now CEOs or writers in Hollywood, uh, game of Thrones. I mean, those guys are hardcore dungeons and dragon players, you know, uh, the movies like, Vin, you know, Vin Diesel, huge dungeons and dragons guy, you know, one of his movies was based on a dungeons and dragons character, the last witch hunter. Um, which he actually plays with Matt Mercer in, in a, in a one shot. Um, but so many people back in the day were in the closet, so to speak, when it came to Dungeons and Dragons now can say, now can say if it wasn't for Dungeons and Dragons, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't have the creativity as a writer. I wouldn't have the social skills as a CEO or any of these other things that Dungeons and Dragons has given them. And, 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 and bringing it out in the mainstream has been fantastic for the game and for all of us who yeah. play it. Because now we're no longer the losers, the geeks, you know, all that. You know, now you have the jocks and the cheerleaders and everybody else playing just right alongside us, you know, too. It's, it's bridging the gap socially through and breaking down social barriers. It is. Um, I, my games have always been exceedingly diverse. Um, mainly because I've always, I, you know, um, uh, for most of my life, I've played on military bases mm-hmm. or um, in some way involved with the military. And um, the military tends to be a it tends to be a diverse environment, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, purposefully so and rightly so. Um, but all of my games have always been, um, uh, you know, who wants to play? Um, yeah. And it brings a lot of people together, you know. I mean, look, I was a theater jock. I I wrestled and I played soccer and I was in theater. I know when did I have time to do anything? Uh, trust me, yeah. I look I look back on it and go, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I did all of these things and I played D and D. And when when we were coming up, you didn't tell people about that, so it was yeah. all done. You know, yeah, especially the during the eighties, yeah, especially during the satanic yeah. panic. Oh, yeah, man, that, that was a rough time, hmm. and that sh- and that was was, was so amazing. I, I got to be honest with you. I think my parents still think that a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> they I think I you're summoning <laughs> demons in the basement and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and that you're going to kill your family you know, one day. Yeah, and, I do. Yeah, I, I do think it. I honestly do think that um, there are some people that. Um, it's just because they don't get it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's okay. And that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, there's plenty of stuff that people do that I don't get. Um, yeah. 
like but, uh, Minecraft. <laughs> oh, oh no! I so my daughter does Minecraft, and I got the explanation for Minecraft right here. It's Legos yeah. for people that don't have. That's it. That is exactly it. I had, I came up with the exact same thing. Legos it, for I, people that don't have room. Yes, that was the exact same thing. I came up and told my girlfriend that that I figured that I had figured that out was that it was Legos on the computer because that's all my kids do is they sit there and build stuff. And then my my 11, now 11-year-old today, uh, he blows it up. So he'll, like, pack it all full of explosives, build this big, huge castle, and then yeah. detonate the whole damn thing and blow it up. You know, stuff that we wish we could have done with a bunch of fireworks and Legos. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah, so, um, you know, I think that uh, – um, yeah, satanic. The, the satanic panic was it was um, it was really bizarre. Um, mm-hmm. And looking back on it, you know about the, you know with thirty years of kind of uh, growth and development and progress, it was ludicrous. Um, it was ludicrous then. It's ludicrous now. Um, yeah. But it but it also shows how easy large groups of people are to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, because I mean, I'll be honest with you. I would never understand knowing the D and D players that I know and, and knowing the gamers that I know, um, I could never imagine, you know, uh, they're, they're wonderful. They're warm. They're inviting. They're, um, you know, but they have jobs, they have lives, they have and and again, there's another D and D trope that goes on right here. Is life mm-hmm. life gets in the way of your game, and you end up taking three or four weeks off because uh, yeah. you can never get people's schedule to go together. Because yeah, that's the thing. This is a hobby. This is, it is a hobby, or some people have turned it into a living, which is awesome. And I'm yes, that is awesome. Super happy for them that they can. Um, you know, we all sh- we all could be so fortunate. Mm-hmm. But it is a hobby for people and hobbies are, are, you know, they are wonderful things, especially when they're shared, especially yeah. when you can get a group of people um, to share their hobby and you have the shared experience and, and you have the shared story. And um, it's just amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. honestly, I think it's a, it's an amazing thing. Um, and, and to have seen it grown. You know, yeah. to really uh, during the Satanic Panic to have thought, well, this is it. I'm, yeah, I'm just, that's it. Yeah, you know, I'm just up. getting a yeah. taste for this. I'm just getting into this, and now you know my parents don't really want me to play. Um, the people are not really being. You know, it, it's going to go away. Was my thought. Yeah, and um, it didn't, and it just got bigger, and it changed, and it got more interesting, and it got more diverse, and it you know you got more tools to tell a better story. Um, and then changed again, got bigger again. You know, mm-hmm. every, every time I thought, you know, TSNR got bought out, they went bankrupt, they got bought out. Yeah. I thought that's it. They're going under. They did, you know, Wizards of the Coast. Yep. Uh, um, they didn't go under, uh, Hasbro, you know, they didn't go under. Uh, I kept thinking the game was going to go under fourth edition came out. I didn't see it as being as popular as it was. Yeah. I thought it was going to go under. And I think that that had a lot to do with um, my internal bias as a long-term player and it mm-hmm. having been so different than what we had played before it. Um, and, but the thing is, is it brought in new players and that was the, that's the key is to bring yeah. in new players is to be open, is to be inviting, is to be accepting, you know, is to have, you know, is to open that door, you know, you can be come in with your, with a rainbow flag. You can come in being part of uh, LGBTQ plus. You can be come in being uh, part of, you know, whatever group it is. You can be suffering from any number of things. Mm-hmm. You know, you can be in a wheelchair. You can be a, you know, it is D and D is a hobby one of the very, very few hobbies that are group related that is open to everyone. Yeah. Um, I have played with nonverbal autistics Mm -hmm. who, um, you know, they could roll the dice and because we use, I I've always used minis 
they were able to communicate and they could communicate through writing and they can, you know, they yeah. could communicate in, in their own way. Um, I have played with people like myself who have suffered brain injuries. Um, I have watched uh, D and D uh, help people with brain injuries mm-hmm. come back from their brain injuries. Oh yeah. Um, I have watched uh, somebody who had had multiple strokes uh, as a young person come back um, and, and come back to play D and D and, and kind of come back and, and do that kind of thing. M- myself, um, I, uh, vet myself, I served in the air force, um, had multiple concussions, um, had TBI, uh, and D and D really helps keep, and, it, and to this day it helps keep yeah. the brain plasticity and it keeps the, the kind of neurons firing and it keeps that creativity going um where and all that beside it builds a confidence in being able to do something yeah and being able to perform and being able to accomplish something and especially when you got players who enjoy it yes yeah so all right we're gonna go ahead and go to a quick commercial and then we'll pick right back up and uh hold on just a moment All right, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, we were talking with Josh and about uh, Dungeons and Dragons and not only just the history of it, but also how it's been very beneficial for in so many ways for so many people. And uh, I want to ask you, um, what are some of your most memorable moments from a campaign, whether it's what a player character has done or something you've pulled out of your hat. What's some of the, what is one of the things that's, you know, really sticks out of your head? So uh, as a player, the most recent one is um, honestly, uh, uh, I, I have a tendency to play bards mm-hmm. as an actor. Um, and I, I like the diversity. I like that there's a lot of options for a bard. Mm-hmm. Bard has they have a lot of things that they can do. They have a lot of things that they can pull off, and you can fit them into anywhere. Um, especially fifth edition, they are kind of yes, especially fifth edition. They are kind of a, um, a generalized adventurer, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of like that. Um, uh, yeah, jack of all trades, master of none. Yep, I I. I identify with that personally. And I think that I, I enjoy playing bards that way. Um, so I'm, uh, and this is, um, uh, this is in Pathfinder, not necessarily D and D, although I call Pathfinder D and D too. Um, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just because, you know, that's where a lot of the guys went when they switched to four, a lot of the folks went over to Piazzo and worked with, um, uh, Pathfinder and worked, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. So that that feel is very familiar, but this is in uh, Pathfinder organized play. This is, uh, the Pathfinder society. Uh, I'm playing a bard and, um, but I'm playing a, a archeologist. Um, okay. and one of the, uh, and we're sitting here and it's in a room and there had to have been 20 tables, with uh, 20 different groups playing at that time. And uh, as one, somebody at the table, uh, they're having a hard time and they, and they screamed to me and they yelled to me, uh, use your bardic inspiration, sing for us, help us through this. And my response was, I'm not that kind of bard. <laughs> and so that became like a running joke of anytime something um, cliche bard come up, the, the joke would be, I'm not that kind of bar. Uh, yeah. Um, and so that became kind of a, a known thing there. Um, so uh, a kind of an interesting event, really, um, uh, I think, for me, anyways, and I kind of described this a little bit earlier, but as a DM, 
I had a player who showed up with her boyfriend Mm -hmm. and she was only playing because of her boyfriend and she was extremely um, insular. She was extremely um, kind of uh, kind of kept it in. Um, She was not a, um, you know, she was not a role player. Uh, mm-hmm. She would roll the dice, she would do her, and then she was, you know, she didn't interact with the other people. She didn't kind of, she was just kind of, um, uh, she was afraid. She was in. So after months of coaching and coaxing and talking to her and everything like that, it turned out that her boyfriend had made her character for her. And it wasn't a character that she wanted to play. So I got with her. We sat down. We made the character that she wanted to play. And the next session introduced the character and she is out there like she's Wonder Woman, man. Uh-huh. She is, I, I mean, she, we made her up a pirate and it was glorious. Nice. She's out there swashbuckling. She's making one liners and, and, and she's doing all of this stuff. And it was just so wonderful to see her come out of her shell It was so wonderful to see her happy, smiling. Oh, it was so amazing. Um, And so uh, that was, uh, you know, as a DM, that's kind of, to me, the... Those are those moments you live for. That's when I won. Yeah. Like, you know, the players often talk about beating the DM or the DMs, the competition or what have you. But to me, when I have a table full of people who are enjoying themselves, who mm-hmm. are smiling, who are laughing, who are, you know, ah, ah, you know, who are right in the edge of, of falling into that great abyss and they survive and they get that, that rush. And then to see somebody come out of their shell and just, and to know that they're going to take that with them. Right. Yeah, um, to know that they are going to take that sense of confidence, that sense of accomplishment, that sense of, um, you know, and that character that they've created in their head is going to be a little bit part of them. Mm-hmm. And it's going to give them a little bit of that bravery. It's going to give, you know, if I can do this, I can do other things. Yeah. And that to me is just, it's it's worth all the hard work you put in being a DM. It is, and those, those story and those, those yeah, say. yeah, or, yeah. Again, as a story master, and, and that would be those are those moments I live for too. Is when you do see those those players come out of their shell and really get into the game, and those are the things that I love too. Um, I got you know several new players uh, that I got on my Sunday game that we're broadcasting, and and they had you know never played before, but. Boy, are they getting into it, especially Cindy. She was just like she took to that like fish to water and was just acting out and everything like that. And and it was great watching her just uh, just take to the game because again, fifth edition has made it so easy for for beginning players just to jump right in. Where all I have to do is just say, "All right, roll your twenty set of dice. I'll tell you what you got to do." until you learn how to find it on your character sheet, yeah. you know? Okay. And, uh, and so it's been fantastic, you know, just seeing that and seeing uh, how she, how she and T Roy has really uh, come out of their shells and really enjoyed the game. And, uh, and then of course with the experienced players um, love how I give them an adventure that they really enjoy something that they can really get into, you know, and something that's different. And so those are those things I really live for uh, as a dungeon master is doing those kind of things. And it makes me want to come back to the table every week. Cause I've been at some games where I'm like, Oh God, do I have to come and DM this one again? And why don't we just TPK them all and start over, you know, and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Uh, No, you know, those are, you have those moments. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't have them for very long. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have them, you know, uh, but if it's a long session, um, look, I'm 42. I got two kids. I got a full-time job. I got all sorts of stuff. So I'm not doing the, uh, 18 hour, 24 hour gaming sessions anymore. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody at my table is the same way. You know, we're all in the same age group. We all have the same stuff going on. Um, so it's, you know, if we go, uh, five hours Mm -hmm. 
that's a long game for us. That's a long game for me. You know, and and that's about where I'm like, all right, you know what? This got to stop right now. I'm done. I don't have the constitution I used to have. You know? Yeah, yeah, Age the endurance down that constitution. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I don't honestly, I gotta be honest, I don't miss the 16 hour games. <laughs> I no, don't, you know? I don't either. I mean, and and even then, we had those games. I don't even remember what the game was about. All I remember though was the camaraderie, yeah, yeah, uh, sitting around eating pizza, or yeah. in our case, I was in Japan, we're eating yakisoba and. You know, uh, and just and just playing, and and I have no idea what the game was about. I just know we had a blast. Yeah, when I was a kid, I was in Germany. I was a military brat in Germany, and uh, we would play in this giant tank hangar that mm-hmm. the uh, NWR had gotten for us. Um, that and and there would be you know four, five, six, seven tables plus all the other nerd stuff that was going on. Uh, and I mm-hmm. say that with nothing but love in my heart. For yeah. all of my uh, uh, geek nerd, whatever you want to call, um, I was never smart enough to be a nerd. So uh, there you have it. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, we would play in there and have all of that, and you know, we would have uh, 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 schnitzel or bratwurst or whatever. You know, yeah. it's, it's Germany, and um, but uh, it, yeah, it was the camaraderie. It's the camaraderie. It's the caring. It's the openness. It's the you know, it's the other players who are quick to help other players. Yeah, um, I think I and, think the biggest thing that helped with that was that because we were all rejected by yeah. high school kids and stuff like that, we yeah. all knew what it was like to be rejected and have no friends, literally. And so, yeah. it, so what what make, that's I think what makes us so open to yeah. other players is that that because we we've been there. We want to open with open arms, welcome people in. Uh, there, uh, I think you hit it on the head. I think that is uh, um, our like uh, th- that is it. That is the reasoning behind why we tend to be so inviting. Is uh, most of us have experienced some form of rejection for either you know for the game that we play or for some other reason um mm-hmm. and so when somebody else comes in we don't want them to feel that way yeah um you know i know for a fact uh and, and i you know we've all seen it we've all seen the gatekeepers mm-hmm. for different um you know for for the different things we've all seen that but i feel like you don't see it as much with the date. No, uh, I think um, I think the nature of gosh, we need more players because we don't have enough to run a game. I think yeah. that gets into your head real early in this game. <laughs> yeah, know? so yeah, especially when it's like we need a backup player, we need somebody on the you know ready to come in if somebody can't show up. Yeah, we need a healer. Uh-oh. Yeah, we need a healer. <laughs> yeah, because nobody wants to play a cleric, you know, or or whatnot. Or we need more meat shields, you know, because we need you know because we all we got are wizards. Everybody know? wants and, to be a rogue. You know, yeah. something like that. Or um, want to cast fireball, you know, and stuff like that. You know, and nobody yeah. wants to be a straight fighter, which is my my preferred character is a straight up fighter. I mean, mm-hmm. the only one that I mean, I'm playing something different in, in one of my buddies' campaigns, and that is a bard barbarian. So I have oh, two classes, class. two classes of barbarian, three classes, uh three ranks in bard, so yes. I'm not so squishy. The the classic barbarian. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, 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 it's an interesting combination. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I believe one of the books had it as a scald. So yeah. you're kind of this, this Nordic sort of uh, uh, build, uh, which I, you know, I, you know, who doesn't love all things Nordic? Um, yeah. I think, I think today that is, um, you know, that's becoming exceedingly popular, rightfully so, rightfully so not taking anything away from it. Um but I think that uh, I think that uh, the beauty of D and D, the absolute beauty of it, is that um, it is where we, as a society, should go. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, um, and I'm not just talking about like within the games. I'm not just talking about the characters and that sort of thing. I'm talking about the community. Yes, I'm talking about where we are um we we not only are open for diversity 
We are actively searching for it because yeah. we need folks. Mm-hmm. You know, every game, um, almost every game has an empty seat mm-hmm. um, and is looking for that piece that fits the game that's going to bring the game together and is going to make that game a whole and make that and really make that group a whole group um you know when you find it when you get your group and you get that whole group and you get them together um uh, it's a, it is such a wonderful thing it is such an amazing thing um obviously you know there's just so many there's literally just so many seats at a table mm-hmm. um uh and so you can only have so many players uh it's a finite number but i feel like um to me anyways until you hit that finite number there's always room for one more you know there's no uh um yeah, set and, and, and if you do hit that number guess what you got enough players to say hey let's start a second campaign or a second game Let's have a second game. You're yeah. absolutely right. I think that um, you know, uh, growing, growing the um, activity, growing the hobby, um, and and just growing the opportunity for people to be together and be people and be doing something that they're doing together that brings them together. Um, yeah. I know I kept using the word together, but that's the you know this is a um, it's a microcosm. It yeah, it's is a community. It is a community, and um, it is a uh, uh, a community of like-minded people, but also different people who bring their differences to the table. Mm-hmm. And then the table is, and, and using the table as a, as a metaphor for the group, the table is bigger than it was on its own. Mm-hmm. It's bigger than it was when one person was sitting on it and it's, and it's more than just the, um, some of its parts. Yeah. It becomes this kind of living, breathing thing. Um, that is, uh, uh, just wonderful. That is just absolutely wonderful. Um, and so to me, I think that, uh, I think it's something humans are looking for. And mm-hmm. so that's why, um, you know, we, we were asking before why it's endured it, or endu- endured, um, uh, excuse my uh, misspoke there. Um, it, uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things that people are looking for, that camaraderie, that um, coming to the table. And look, I've played games, and I know for a fact there are tons of people that have played games where you all sit down to play and you never actually roll dice. You never mm-hmm. actually get into playing because you're there and somebody needs help and somebody needs um, you know, to talk something out. Somebody needs to get something off their chest. Somebody needs that yeah. group therapy session, if you will, where um, they're with people that they trust. They're with people that um, are going to listen. They're with people that are not going to judge them. And they're with people that you know, are, maybe they can help, maybe they can't help, but at the yeah. very least, you know that they're going to be there for you. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's, I, I, I love the game. Mm-hmm. I love the, uh, community that ha- is built up around the game. Um, and so to me, I don't often think about what it is about the game that I enjoy because it's just yeah. such a part of my life. You know, it's, it would be like asking, what do you, what do you enjoy about going to the beach? Yeah. Um, You know, (laughs) what do you, what do you enjoy about going to um, the mountains? You know, Mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's very hard to explain, Um, but it's there and it's certainly um, wonderful. Well, we're going to have to tie this up, but thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and put you in the back room real quick as I, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, do the outro, but uh, thank you so much for coming on. Great interview. Loved having you on here, man. It was awesome. Thank you. Love to be on. All right. I want to thank everybody who's in here uh, watching the uh, the show, especially those of you who are watching the uh, podcast or, I mean, sorry, listening to the podcast of the show. Be sure to check us out live on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here, wherever uh, this is showing 
WLF, WLFE-DB.com, Stream TV on Variety Unlimited Channel, or uh, on Facebook Live at Bipolar DM. You can listen to this show wherever you find your favorite podcast. We're on Spotify, um, Apple, all the big ones there. Again, if you want to contact us, you can get a hold of me through email, thebipolardm at gmail.com, or uh, go to my webpage, www.thebipolardm.com. Now, next week's show, of course, we're going to be having Jason on. Uh, he is going to be talking about mental illness and Dungeons and & Dragons and how that has helped him. And, um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up, so... Thank you again for tuning in to the Bipolar DM show. I am the host, Jason, the Bipolar DM, and I want to thank you again for watching. And uh, remember, everybody, take your meds. Thank you for listening to the Bipolar DM. They love sharing thoughts and ideas. See you next week, 7 p.m. Saturdays on WLFE dash db.com where our shows are your shows and that makes for great talk radio wlfe digital broadcast network is on tv you can watch all of our shows on wlfe dash db.com check out our channels paranormal view for all of your paranormal type shows lgbtq friends for all of our lgbtq shows Variety Unlimited for all other shows. It runs 24-7 right on WLFE-TV.com. You'll even catch the live all in one place. Never miss an episode, past or future. WLFE-TV.com, where our shows are your shows.